my apologies for the late start. Um, had some technical difficulties. A update pushed for my computer last night, and I didn't realize that. So I had to update that there's a new uh, update for all the drivers for literally everything that plugs into my computer uh, with the USB. So that's awesome. But we're here, we're live, and uh, I'm gonna get right to it because I'm late already. 20 minutes late, goodness gracious. I love technology. Technology's great, it's super. So, whatever, we're gonna kick it. Technology, love it. That's my favorite. I like woke up, went over to the computer and like kind of jostled my, my mouse a little bit and it didn't do anything. I was like, huh, it's really strange. Why doesn't that work? And I'm like, ah, whatever, think nothing of it. I'm like, I'll fix it later, not a huge deal. It's just the mouse, I don't need the mouse to stream. Come in here and I'm um, setting up. My mic doesn't work. Hmm. Now we got a problem. So I'll go ahead and I go and check the sound settings and I go check for updates. Sure enough, there's a big old fat update that uh, needs to get pushed. I guess Windows must have updated something last night. I don't know. So big old driver had to get pushed, updated, and uh, it was a big one. It took a minute to just to download the thing. So it must have been a pretty serious update, but it was literally the update was for anything that plugs into a USB port, which is everything that I use to stream. <laughs> Super. So yeah, we're 20 minutes, we're 20 minutes behind, but you know what, we're still here. It's Tuesday. It is day seven of Dead Sember. You. But yeah, no worries, no stress. <coughs> Ooh. It's actually much warmer in here today than it was yesterday, which is kind of nice. 60 degrees in here already. Yeah, feeling jams today. Yeah, yesterday was kind of chilly. Oh, what's going on here? Why are you doing this to me? The good people can't see what I'm doing for my workout if it looks like that. All right. There we go. Boom. We got deficit. Deficit deadlifts today. Yikes. 
Not my favorite, but that's okay. Hey, I just do the program. The program says deficit deadlift, and I do it. That's just, it's just that easy. Freaking hungry. Dude, I, I'm a little, I hate troubleshooting. Um, well, okay, that's not true. That's not true. I don't hate troubleshooting. I'm just not a fan. You know, if I have all the time in the world to troubleshoot, right? Like, not a huge deal. Because it's just, I can take my time and figure it out. And it's like a puzzle, right? Like, I'll figure out what I need to do to troubleshoot. But this morning, of course, it always happens like first thing in the morning when I really don't have the time to troubleshoot. So, of course, this morning was like, oh, it looks like Windows needs to be needs an update. So I download the update. The update takes forever to download, install it, all that good stuff. Takes forever. Like once the update downloaded, it was fine. But I would assume that something like that would automatically download, update, restart overnight. Call me old fashioned, but yeah. So, you know, it's just a, it's, that's a, that's a, you know, 20, what is it, first, first world problems? Is that a first world problem? I think it is. I think that counts as a first world problem. But you know what? If that was if that's the biggest problem I run into today, I'm okay with it. Not a huge deal. Max, good morning, man. Good morning. Tuesday's going well so far. I was just so freaking hungry that I discovered this morning that, like, my mouse and my microphone and a couple, you know, some other stuff wasn't working. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Wonder why this stuff isn't working. Come to find out, I go into sound settings and I go. I'm like fooling around with the microphone and it hits me. I'm like, you know what? Let me check for updates real quick. Let me see if that's what it is. Sure enough, there's a big old fat, big old update that need to get pushed for like pretty much all USB devices that plug into my computer. So it's like, a, it was an update for Windows 11 for all by 64 stuff, right? So that took like 15, it took me like maybe a half hour to troubleshoot that. So that was awesome. <laughs> good start, good start so far, but you know what? We're here, it's all good. We're gonna lift, we're gonna, we're gonna deadlift today, uh, December, day seven, tug life. But yeah, it's gonna be a beautiful day, it's all good. 
I've been through, I've had worse. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was not awesome. But yeah, so that's where we're at right now. <laughs> I'm about to hit this set of six uh, on my first set of deficit de deadlifts. And I'm afraid to boot up my laptop after work. Do you have you have Windows 11 at work, man? Ballin'. <laughs> oh man, I uh, so my computer is off network most of the time, so my work computer is use typically using some sort of Wi-Fi, whether whether it's like a Wi-Fi puck or my home Wi-Fi or whatever. So anytime I bring my laptop into work and actually plug it into the to the network like a hard line. It's just my laptop is almost unusable for that day because it's just every single update that I haven't gotten because it hasn't been plugged into the network just <coughs> all starts to hit at one time. So it's that's awesome. It's, it's great. And of course, they normally will push updates over the weekend and I don't leave my laptop at work over the weekend, at least most of the time, because typically I'm not in the office for work whether I'm traveling somewhere else or whatever so yeah that's my favorite that's my favorite especially with these government computers that we have that I have at least yeah good times good times again first world problems right like not a huge deal but it's it's definitely annoying when it takes almost an hour just to log into Outlook to check emails that I know probably have no, no response required from me, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, once again, first world problems, not a huge deal. Yeah, yesterday had a good workout. I ran at lunch, which was nice because it was mostly pain free without uh, further running. And I've had this like, I've had this nagging foot injury since March of this year. So we're going on nine months dealing with this foot injury in one way or another. It's pretty, my foot is pretty sore right now, which is not, not ideal, right? But I was pretty happy with how my foot felt yesterday. I didn't run very fast. Um, I did like a, I did a run walk program. So it was five, rounds or five sets of run three minutes, walk three minutes. And what I've been doing is I go to the track and I'll go run on the track. And for my walk, the when I rest, I will walk backwards. And walking backwards helps with my foot a lot. So obviously the walking backwards will help um, just because it's loading my the backside of my leg in a different way. And then the other thing is obviously I need to stretch. So today 
at lunch when I work out, I'm just gonna go for like a walk or a hike and I'll like, I'll go walk over to the track, do my walking, walk a couple laps, probably walk a lap backwards and then start doing my stretching, my exercises and all that good stuff. Walk a crack park in Florida, see if I have to do any running. Dang. Well, be safe out there, man. It's a jungle. Adventure skater, good morning. I hope you're doing well. What part of Florida are you in? I don't, I don't think I knew that, that you were in Florida. Florida's a dream, man. I got, you know, forget California. I got to get to Florida, bro. California's beat. <laughs> I'm an East Coast guy, though, you know, so Fort Myers, nice, nice. A lot of, ain't, aren't there a lot of, like, gators out there by Fort Myers? Is that, like, one of the, pl the places that I, like, hey, what's going on, Ramier? Good morning. Good morning, brother. Good to see you, man. Isn't, isn't Fort Myers, like, got a lot of alligators over there? Am I, am I thinking of the right place? Like, you're, Fort Myers is kind of like in the, is that in the panhandle? Or am I thinking of a different spot? Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But not every part of Florida is like a swampy area. Like, you know, the, you know, the central part of Florida, then like the northern part, and then obviously by the, the panhandle and stuff. Like, yeah, you're going to have lots of gators over there. Two hours south of Tampa. Yeah, okay, so you're, okay. I know where that's at. I remember now. Okay. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah, actually, I think I know some... Uh, I think I know a guy that's from that area that's a, a Marine. He went to the Naval Academy. Yeah. Central has the big... Yeah, big lake. Northern part has, yeah, the woods and such. Yep. Bonifay, Pensacola, etc. Yeah. So I've been over by Pensacola, well, Destin. I've been to Destin. Uh, I've been to Orlando. I've been down to Key West. I've been to, well, I guess kind of been to Miami, but not really, like I kind of drove through it. Um, but yeah, I've been to Florida a couple times. Not, nothing crazy. Uh, although my, my sister was born in Tallahassee, but I don't even remember. I was, we were very young when we lived there. Yeah, buddy from the army, he was a Chinook pilot. Nice, dude, Destin? Destin is nice, bro. Like, that's, that, it, like, you wanna talk about beautiful beaches? I, I gotta say, like, Destin, and I've been to a lot of different beaches all over the United States, like California, uh, you know, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Delaware, New Jersey, Virginia, uh, yeah, the Redneck Riviera. Oh, hell yeah, baby. That's my people. <laughs> yeah. Friends in low places, cheap living. I'm all about it. Give me a good dive bar, bro. I'm ready. My body is ready. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Okay, so we hitting, we hitting deadlifts today. We're deficit deadlifting. Uh, not my favorite, mostly because it puts, I feel like it puts my back in a bad position. So I'm not really super excited about that, but whatever. I just do whatever the program tells me to do. Then we're going to squat and then we got some accessory work, some nasty supersets, uh, with some swings, some goblet squats, ab rollouts, and then we're going to finish up with some, uh, glute ham raises, some jumps and some walking lunges, deficit deadlift. So uh, you can't, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see that plate on the ground there. So if you can see this plate right here, I'm going to stand on the plate. So my body is about, that's, uh, that plate's about three, three and a half inches, right? So I'm about three, three and a half inches up off the ground. So you're deadlifting at a deficit, right? Redded redneck in the chat. <laughs> my brain, meanwhile, playing Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Raymer, you would love you would love it in the South, bro. I'm, I promise you. <laughs> so you never ground the plates? Oh, like, uh, what do you mean? Like actually, like attach it to the ground somehow? I mean, I've seen people lift on like a, a short box or um... oh the plates. Oh, do, like in my normal training program? No, I, I almost I almost never deadlift from a deficit like this 
just because, like I said, I feel like it puts my back in a bad position. Like, actually, I can already feel my back is a little bit, like, wonky. <laughs> I guess I'll just let you handle yours and see what this is about. Yeah, actually, I got to hit this next set anyway. So, this is 240 for a set of six. So... Not my favorite, but it's all right. All right. That was 240. I got four reps at 250. deadlifts or I understand the purpose behind them but I'm not like super excited to do them <sighs> yeah it's called deficit because uh, of the start point so the start point of the lift is lower than it normally would be so you're lifting from a deficit essentially um, because you've got further to pull the bar to stand it up but yes hey, thank you for that uh, I have to be very solid on my form because like I said I've had low back issues since really since like 2015 like 2015 2016 time frame I've been I've had issues with my lower back so my form on the deadlift I'm, I try to stay as tight and as solid as possible on those because it helps it helps keep me healthy yeah something further i had to google yeah that's right yeah oh yeah no no worries man <laughs> youngins and all your fancy terms and methods <clears throat> i am actually <clears throat> about as simple as it gets in most of my programs so this program that i'm doing is uh released by a guy called daniel mckim and he he's uh releasing this program with Sorenex and the pen and paper strength app and those guys they all all those guys really know what they're doing when it comes to strength training so I personally have no issues with just you know whatever the program says to do I'm gonna do it um, I whenever I've done these programs I have not had any issues with my back like my back will get sore a, a little bit but it won't really hurt you know so for me if I can, if I get a solid program and I can run with it and it doesn't hurt me, hey, I'm all about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I may be, I'm, I may be younger than you, but I'm not that young anymore, man. Like, I'm getting banged up. Uh, you know, all that, my time in the Marine Corps is catching up with me. <laughs> yeah, form is what I need to stay on, <clears throat> being old and all. Lower back is jacked a bit. I got degenerative lumbar and four vertebrae that are looking like triangles with bone spurs right now. Just doing five by five. I'm on week five. Yeah, five by five is good, um, especially if you're just looking for some strength gains. But if you know you've had some injury issues, and I, you know, this is like pot calling kettle black, right? Like, I need to do more mobility work, more stretching, more flexibility type stuff, more warming up cooling down, etc. That needs to be a bigger part of my program. Um, so like, you know, for example, today at lunch, I think I mentioned it earlier, I'm gonna go for a little walk, probably throw uh, a rucksack on, just not nothing crazy, it's got a, it'll have like a 30 pound plate in it. Just go for a little ruck, just on the track, walk around for a little bit, and then at that point, like, I'm gonna take some time to stretch, to take care of my body, make sure I feel good, all that stuff. Nothing high impact today, just kind of a recovery 
active recovery, if you will. Yeah, all the stuff we didn't do in the military, I, it always <laughs> hold that thought. But I got, I got a, I got a, a minor rant to go on <laughs> concerning that. But yes, absolutely, all the things they didn't teach you in the in the Marine Corps. <clears throat> I love rants standing by. Okay, I gotta load the bar to 260 and then we'll hit that. especially in the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps is by far the youngest branch in the military. And what I mean by that is if you look at our demographics, the actual people that make up the Marine Corps on average are younger than all of the other branches by, by a lot, by like four or five years. So the average Marine is four or five years younger than any soldier, airman, sailor, whatever that you will meet on average, right? And another big, so because of that, like people look at Marines like, oh, they're young, they're fit, they're healthy. Well, yeah, but a lot of them don't last very long. <laughs> There's a reason for that, you know? <laughs> it's a meat grinder, man. Like we chew people up and we spit them out. And if like, if you can't survive, like there's the door, see you later. Like. Bye. And that's not, to me, that's not the right way to do business, especially if you're talking about the smallest branch, smallest uh, by personnel wise. Well, actually, I think we might be slightly smaller than the Air Force. The Air Force is pretty small too, but we are, you know, we don't have a lot of people, long story short, right? Especially when you're comparing us to the Navy or the Army, for sure, we have let, way less people than them. Yeah, and that that was that was uh, developed back in the 1950s. A lot of people don't know that that the president has the authority to send the Marine Corps anywhere he wants, whenever he wants, and that was developed in the 1950s. And that's a big reason why I think the Marine Corps probably isn't going anywhere anytime soon, is because without the Marine Corps, the president doesn't have the authority to send the Army or the Navy or any of those people to war, essentially. So. He can utilize the Marine Corps as a crisis reaction force, which is kind of a, you know, a mis not a misnomer, it's a, it's a sleight of tongue, if you will. But yes, because of that though, uh, the other big, th the other thing I was getting to is the average person, you know, the average civilian or the average citizen will look at somebody in the Marine Corps and the, the military in general and think, oh, they look fit, they must really know what they're doing when it comes to fitness. And that is just not the case. Like, we don't get trained. Like I never got a class on, hey, this is how you should strength train. Or hey, this is, a, this is what a good running program looks like. Or this is what a good like hiking program looks like. I, there is no training, <clears throat> standardized training for the average Marine or sailor or whatever. There's no good standardized training that teaches you how to work out, how to even do basic barbell movements or any of that crap. There is nothing, there is no education that is standardized and formalized, none whatsoever. So, you know, people always get stunned when they see like young Marines or young sailors working out and they look like garbage. Well, yeah, of course they do because you got these kids coming out of high school and maybe they worked out before they joined the Marine Corps. Maybe they didn't. I don't, we don't know. Maybe they have a good athletic background. Maybe they don't. So, and even if they do have a good athletic background, maybe they never had a good coach that actually taught them how to weightlift or how to do these things 
or how to formulate what a good program looks like for them. So it, it is just, there. it's all across the board, it's not good. And we are not doing what we need to do to teach them. And it, it just boils down to like, oh, it's a money thing. Like we don't wanna invest that much time and effort to doing it. It's like, well, <laughs> look at the way that people are getting broken and busted up throughout their career. And especially if you stick around for longer than four years, like you're gonna feel the pain eventually. Uh, did that lead to development of the MEF and the MEVs? I was not a Marine, but I worked on many gigs with them. Yeah, so the Marine Expeditionary Force, well, the Marine Expeditionary Brigade, <laughs> that's a different rant, actually. Uh, <laughs> there's no real good training across the branches, maybe in certain areas of, or units, but not consistent. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, I, I'm about, <laughs> if you're interested, I'll go on my rant about the MEV. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it for those. Now we got back squat, back squat, we got 2.30 to start, 2.30. Yeah, and to add to that, there's no real rehabilitation for vets. The VA has gotten better, but it's not consistent. Yeah. We've been going to the VA for 21 years. They have gotten better. I went and bought one of those bar jacks to lift the bar up to remove the ad plates. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> Where was this stuff 15 years ago, right? Yeah, the bar jacks are uh, particularly useful, especially if, you're de if you deadlift a lot, like frequently and also a lot of weight. But uh, to touch on the MEV real quick, the MEV is like a good idea fairy that came to fruition that doesn't really exist. That's, that's my impression of the MEV. Essentially the MEV is just like, uh, I don't know how much you know about like Marine, about Marine Corps or like ops or whatever, but it's essentially just a command element. It, the Navy doesn't have enough ships to deploy a MEV or a MEB at one time. It can't be done. Logistically, it can't be done. They don't have enough amphibious ships to actually deploy the Marine Corps in the way that we are supposed to be deployed. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> so the MEV in reality is just a command element. It's a bunch of like senior officers that can do like command and control, uh, you know, in a crisis or whatever, if, if needed. But in reality, the MEV as it's like, as it's designed on paper, can't be done it, it doesn't so in my mind it doesn't exist it's not real it's just an imaginary thing that the marine corps like advertises that we can do <clears throat> i just went on row the edge of the bar and put the place yeah that's what i do right here <laughs> uh, i work with the mevs till like until first mev uh came or such basically a mev is a bunch of people thrown together get on ground I exactly it's because if you look at the actual structure of a MEV on paper, it's a lot of stuff. It's basically uh, like if you take two or three mews and smash them together and then put like a command element over top of it, that's what the MEV is supposed to be. So 
yeah, again, it, even meth, meth deployed to Afghanistan, but it was meth forward. Essentially, just like the command element went forward. It, it's not the whole, all of like one meth or two meth or three meth, like they, they never deployed as a whole. That's never happened. Um, it's impossible to do because you can't put the whole meth on ships. It would take, it would take years to get one meth moved from Southern California to anywhere in the world. It would take years, in my opinion. <clears throat> 300 Marine grunts over 1500 army any day. Uh, no comment. I've never really worked with the Army Infantry. Um, I have, uh, I served at the 5th Marine Regiment. Actually, I'm going back there and deploying with them to Murph D, uh, to Australia. It's pretty soon here. But, uh, yeah, 1st Marine Division, that's, that's where I work right now. There, there's nobody, nobody like the 1st Marine Division. Even in the Marine Corps. It's, it's a very different, very different beast out here. So, yeah. Alice Springs. No, we're going to Darwin. I don't know where Alice Springs is at. All right, I got to hit this set of six. Okay, You don't need that. Yes, but it's hilarious. <laughs> I laugh every time somebody's uh, messages get deleted <laughs> for saying things that are pretty benign. I can see what you said, but nobody else can. It's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very true. It is a swear word, technically. Yeah, I, um, I do not squat, quote unquote, ass to grass. I think it's a little bit excessive. Um, Below parallel is good enough for me. <clears throat> it removes the evidence of my existence. Oh man, yeah, I uh, like I said, I, I mean, I can do it. Um, I just don't personally see a whole lot of benefit for me uh, to doing that. That's just I don't know. I I understand what people are saying, like, oh, you want to squat ass to grass because. Uh, it promotes a good uh, flexibility and strength throughout the whole range of motion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, honestly, if I get below parallel, I'm good with that. Uh, that counts, you know. Like, it's I don't get super dogmatic about it, you know. 
Alice Springs, super secret. Dude, I don't even know where Alice Springs is at. <laughs> I'd have to look that up. I just do the form the way I do. I'm not really putting much thought into it. Yeah, I hear you. Medusa! What's going on, Marie? How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Early morning streams. Yes, good morning. It is a good morning here. I hope you're having a good morning so far. All right, let's see. I got another another set of six, I think. Yeah, another set of six. Then four at 265. Then four at feeling great today. Those are feeling really nice. <sighs> Work on the website. Very nice. Friend just called. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that lurk, Medusa. <laughs> Appreciate you. All right. Yeah, two, 265. So it's, what is that? 245, Fantastic Monday yesterday and a good start to the day so far. Ah, shoot, man. You're not you're not a pain at all. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care what anyone says about you. You're a good dude. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Excuse me. The trick is not to breathe the coffee. You have to drink the coffee. I don't know if you all knew that, but you try not try not to breathe that in. The coffee doesn't really agree with the lungs very much. Woo! <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah. The, the squats feel great today, though. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, thanks for that sweet alert. Yeah, got to separate the two. Got to separate the two. <laughs> Just when I used to drink lots of beer. Should have learned that about the age of five or so, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, life is a learning experience, though. Sometimes uh, those, there are some of us that learn a little bit more slowly than others. That is a fact. But yeah, but um, so anywho, going, <laughs> we're gonna circle back a little bit further there. The foot injury that I have basically came from a lot of uh, it's just overuse. Honestly, I put too much miles, too many miles on my feet in the month of February, and it effed up my foot, which uh, I think it's like just like a bone spur on the back of my right foot. So it's kind of painful, but as long as I stretch and ice it and take care of it, it's not that big of a deal. What up, Zero? Man, Zero coming in hot this morning, just <laughs> right off the bat. No hello, no good morning. Just uh, handing out a good, good, uh, good game to Raymier over there. Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you use uh, the exclamation mark and then spank, you can spank somebody digitally in chat. There are other commands too. Um, yeah. Is there a remedy? Honestly, it's 
it, 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 they can go away on their own if you take care of it. I, I, in essence, stretch, ice, um, don't put too, much, too many miles on it, uh, give it a rest, that kind of stuff, you know, the typical stuff. There are exercises that I do to like strengthen the back of my legs and like try to take some pressure off of my heel. So I've been doing a lot of that, but foot injuries, they just take time. It's, it's just something I've been dealing with since March. I can run like once or twice a week. And uh, it, it's just like today my foot hurts, that's all. So I should probably take some ibuprofen and like I said, at lunch, I'm gonna do a lot of the skating, or skating, stretching, and all that kind of stuff. I would never spank another man or someone I think maybe identifying as a man and such, etc. <laughs> hey, like I said, that's a, that's a good game, spank. A little tap on the butt, you know? Virtually, of course. I've been able to put my Streamlabs to work, so bummed. I had all fun custom commands. You haven't been able to get your Streamlabs. Are you using Streamlabs OBS? Because you can, because I'm using OBS. Uh, open broadca broadca uh, broadcasting software. I switch from Streamlabs OBS to OBS and I just imported all my alerts and stuff into OBS without any issues. It was pretty easy. The one thing I, I haven't figured out yet is how I can create new alerts or commands in just OBS, but I think if I, I can do it through stream elements, I just haven't played with stream elements all that much been dorked up with different issues for the last week yeah my past two streams have been nothing short of a disaster oh i broke my what is that coccyx what is that and it hurts to sit for a long time is that like your tailbone i can mention some of those marine troop games uh, that i learned about uh i'm still scarred to this day yeah you know so i streamed on xbox and i have to manage everything on mobile Ooh. Yikes, yikes. Yeah, mobile is not great for um, managing like streaming stuff. The very, very tip of the tail tailbone. Yeah, got it. That's what I figured it was. Uh, you need to get a standing desk, Marie. That's what I have. I have a standing desk in my house. Although I still have a stool that I will use with the standing desk. Um, all right, let's see. I gotta hit this set of 265. Uh, set of four. Four reps. break the very tip of your tailbone did you like fall on your butt or something <sighs> extra hard to manage everything I'm mobile absolutely I just want to be clear on messaging <laughs> my friend has the worst thing I'm here lurking I can kind of hear you from my tablet but I'm here lurking no worries he always calls when I'm mid hanging out <laughs> on stream Dude, you gotta send that dude a voicemail. If I'm on stream, I'm not picking up the phone at all. I don't care who calls. Of course, my oldest daughter does that to us. Um, we're eating, um, we're sleeping, um, etc. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that being said though, I always got annoyed when I called like my mom. <laughs> my mom never picks up her phone. And it's a combination of she just never really has it on her and she is legitimately like doing something whether she's working out or whatever so 
My mom can be a hard woman to get a hold of sometimes. But strangely enough, when my sons, when the grandchildren call my mom, she's suddenly very easy to get a hold of. It's really strange. I, I just don't get it. It's, it's almost like she loves them more than she loves me. It's weird. I got a 26 and a 14 year old, so I spent 15 years Overseas. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, because we hope hold on to hope for grandkids. Uh, grandkids are like the golden promise, right? Like cute little kiddos that are kind of yours, but also kind of not. You could just give them back to the parents. You'd be like, here you go. Like take care of this child. See you later. You know. That's like the best of both worlds. They're kind of your kids because they're your grandkids, but they're also not really yours. You don't have to take them home with you. Yeah, we can jack them up and send them back. Exactly, exactly. If they're acting all crazy, that's fine because you know that it's just a temporary thing and then you're going to send them back to their parents and it's no longer your problem. Yeah. Terrible. That's both the best and the worst at the same time. <laughs> like the grandkids don't say no if I tell them to do something. Uh, but the parents get that word a lot. Yeah. My kiddos get in trouble pretty quick if they tell me no. But <laughs> yeah, raising kids in general is a temporary thing. You got 18 years to get them up to speed. Well, only 18 if you're lucky. I guess nowadays it's like a very common thing for kids to live in their parents' house till their mid 20s. <laughs> I had one conversation about saying no. Yeah. I give them one chance and what, what normally happens is I tell them to do something and usually it's the little one. The little one's the belligerent one and he'll say no and at that point that's when I respond with what did you say and I'm gonna basically I'm gonna tell him like look I heard what you said but what you said wasn't okay so I'm gonna give you one more chance to fix yourself and then after that I'm gonna make you do what I told you to do and it's, you're not gonna like that. My son will take a little bit longer, but frankly, enjoy the time you have with kids. Absolutely. They jump through stages so quickly. Oh, yeah, for sure. I find that giving the kid two choices make it easier than yes, no choices. Yes, I totally agree. There is also a time and a place for everything. So if possible, I give them, hey, you can do this or you can do that. And that typically tells them, hey, look, I'm going to give you at least some sort of choice here. Because kids are just like anybody else. They want to have some sort of freedom to choose what they want to do, right? It's just, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you got, they, they have to, it's like, hey, look, you're going to do what I tell you to do right now because I need you to. You either get your room clean or <laughs> clean your room. <laughs> which, do you, which do you want to do? I like that one. Do you scissor hand him when you correct him? You mean knife hand? <laughs> Maybe. Too much thinking, do as I say. <laughs> I'm saying it for a reason. Free thought is available up till I t uh, till I tell you to do it. Yeah, major pain. <laughs> that is one of my all time favorite movies, by the way. Good lord. Major pain is such a great movie. That is one of the finest films in all of cinema. Hands down. Hands down. <sighs>
<laughs> I take pleasure in gutting you, boy. If he's in there, he's pissed now. Did it really just time you out for that? That's hilarious. It was worth it that time. That scene was the best. And like a bad prior Roman emperor adventure skater was removed from history. <laughs> yeah. If he's in there, he ain't happy. Oh, that scene was so good. <laughs> Major Pain just terminated that bad man with extreme prejudice. Oh, that's so good. Such a good scene. Yeah, he says he ain't happy. He ain't happy. If he's still in there, he ain't happy. Ah. <laughs> Honestly, freaking hungry is the guy that's really that's normally swearing in the chat. But I appreciate you uh, coming in, hanging out, man. Always a pleasure. You're welcome here anytime, man. You can come on, come on down whenever you want, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, hope you have a fantastic day as well. Alright, what am I even supposed to be doing right now? Let's see. I got swings, goblet squats, ab rollouts are right, next. They're supposed to be heavy kettlebell swings, but I don't have a heavy kettlebell, so I'm going to do what I can. Peace. Yeah, let's see. So I got Indie Fit. How are you doing, man? Thanks for popping in, hanging out. It's good to see you. Can you? Uh, can we get a shout out for Indie Fit? I don't know if Zero's still out there. <laughs> he like popped in, gave Raymir a good spank, and then a hug. <laughs> and, yeah, if any of the mods are still out there, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Zero. Appreciate you. He's there. He's still here. He's hanging out. He's lurking. I appreciate you, Zero. Good to see you, man. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. <laughs> The, yeah, the ab, ab wheel rollouts, man. They're the worst. Every time I do those, my abs are so sore. Zero, I don't know. Have we got a shout out for Raymir, too? I can't remember. I'm the worst. My bad, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, the ab wheel, ab wheel rollouts are the worst, hands down, hands down. Not a fan. Uh, but hey, like I said, I do what the program tells me to do, you know, like, I'm going to be sore for a while from those, oh, I'm supposed to do 10 goblet squats, oops, it's all good, I think I'm just going to do 10, 10, 8, and then go from there, I thought I, did I do 10, I don't remember, I don't remember, I, <laughs> to be fair, Ramier also had a pretty low, like, points redemption total uh, for the ad wheel rollouts. I think he was just relying on the kindness of people to not redeem ad wheel rollouts <laughs> like a thousand times. So uh, <laughs> I think he found out pretty quickly that is not the case. <laughs> for whatever reason, people like to watch Ramier suffer. <laughs> yeah, it was like 500 channel, like 500 points. It wasn't even like a thousand or anything like that. It was not not a lot at all. <laughs> Super funny. <laughs> all right. Coffee's all done. I am caffeinated. So there's that. It's a good day so far. <sighs> Too funny. Too funny. Yeah, I've definitely been on Ramier's stream before when people had him do almost a hundred ad wheel rollouts. That's a lot. <laughs> I feel like my abs, like I, I feel like I would get injured <laughs> if I attempted to do that many ad wheel rollouts. Maybe that's just me, but I mean, I'll just do these sets. So it's just three sets. Three by eight, it's not a lot, right? However, I will be sore for days. <laughs> My abs, specifically, will be sore for days after doing these ab wheel rollouts. There are, I mean, there are a lot of bang for your buck, for sure. They are hard, it is no joke. I mean, for example, I know a lot of people that do them from the standing, so they'll be standing up and roll all the way out down onto their toes, like fully extended, and then roll all the way back up. And I am not that guy. <laughs> I am not that strong. So I will just stick to being on the on the, the little pad right there and doing them from my knees. So that's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. I get the I get what I want out of it, so it's all good. They are definitely they're great though, especially for me, when I do deadlifts doing the deadlifts and then following that up by doing something very difficult with my the front side of my body evens it out and really helps my back stay in place. So for me, doing the ab wheel rollouts as a part of this deadlifting program is critical for me to stay healthy. That so yeah, they're hard, but I don't I don't really complain all that much because I know that I need to do these. They will they will help my back stay stay in, in place, you know?
That's it for that. Super set. We got glute ham raise, max height jumps, walking lunges. Not too bad. Let's get a little finisher. Played a little Metroid Dread last night, Metroid Monday. Was in full effect. That game is hard. So, I'm not, I don't shy away from something that's challenging as long as it's fun. But that game is no joke. It is freaking hard. So, uh, for those of you considering, anyone that's considering playing Metroid Dread that's in the chat, uh, you have been warned. That game is hard. And I played, so I have played Metroid, you know, what do they call it? They call it Metroidvania style games, you know, like Castlevania slash Metroid. Like I've played those kinds of games uh, for years. I mean... We're probably going on maybe 20 years of playing those kinds of games, like on and off, obviously, not like 20 years straight. But I probably started playing Metroidvania games when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old. No joke. And this one, this has got to take the, this is probably the hardest one I played. I don't know, maybe it's just the mechanics, like I'm not used to like some of the gameplay mechanics, but it, the, this game almost encourages you to bypass some, like some of the enemies. So in other games, like uh, Castlevania, for example, it's you're not necessarily encouraged to bypass enemies and not fight certain enemies because you're trying to build up the uh, the strength of your character, right? You can it's more like RPG style, where this game is more action adventure, and I'm just not used to that because I see like enemies around and I want to shoot them, I want to kill them, and all that, and all that kind of stuff. But it really doesn't benefit you to do that. Like you you should do that if that enemy has an a, an opportunity to hurt you. But if they don't if they don't really have the opportunity to hurt you, the only enemies you really have to kill. Are like the bosses and the drones that are like running around that will kill you. I don't know. It's just it's it's a little bit it's a little bit of a mind shift, uh, mindset shift for this game particularly, which is probably why I'm struggling with it. I don't know. All right. Uh, so what I got? I got eight. Eight, five, and six each.
so yeah. So, and normally when I'm doing a first playthrough, I will just play the game. No, no guide, no walkthrough. Just, hey, I'm just gonna blindly kinda go play this game and figure it out. Well, last night I was, I was so frustrated with Metroid that I, I went and looked at a walkthrough. I'm like, I need to, I don't have a clue what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And of course, it was something super simple that I missed. So, you know, my fault that I missed it. However, you know, the thing is that in order to make good progress through this game, you need to be familiar with all the skills and techniques that Samus has available to her and be able to utilize them to explore the map. To make progress through the map is difficult because it's not super clear where you need to go. So map completion is important. However, because of the limited abilities that are available to you early in the game, it's, it's really hard to figure out where exactly you're supposed to be going because there are a lot of dead ends in the, the first kind of portions of the game. So at a certain point, it does become difficult to figure out exactly where you're supposed to go. At least that's my perspective. I don't know. I could be wrong, <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's fun. I'm having fun playing it. I will complete it. I think I'm maybe halfway through Metroid Dread, like maybe. <laughs> I think I'm still pr relatively early on in this game. So uh, I think more than likely what I'm gonna do is stick to just playing Metroid Dread on Mondays. I think potentially tomorrow night I will play Bioshock 2. I'll start Bioshock 2 and start playing that game. Potentially, I think is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do the same thing with Bioshock 2. I'm going to try to rescue every single little sister throughout that game is my goal. So, we'll see. See how that goes. It's like getting late already. Alright, got one more set, one more set of that, then we're done for the morning. I was talking about this earlier, late start this morning, had uh, some technical difficulties getting started. There was a big update, big driver update for anything that uses a USB port, so that was awesome. Took about 20 to 30 minutes to troubleshoot which was my, my favorite thing. I just love troubleshooting, it's so great. <laughs> it's not great, but you know, figured it out. First world problems, right? I worked through it, figured it out. Good stream, good workout, getting a good sweat going. So it's a little, I mean, it's a little warm in here this morning. 
60 degrees in here. It was like 52, 53 in here yesterday. Noticeable difference. I don't know why it was so much warmer today than yesterday, at least this morning. So very interesting. Yeah, troubleshooting in the first thing in the morning, not my favorite thing, but like I said, got it, got it figured out, got it done. Great stream, great workout. This is, I mean, I've been very happy with the December workouts so far. They've been a lot of fun. They've been challenging. Uh, still relatively simple, which I appreciate. Cause I'm a simple guy, you know what I mean? Very simple. <laughs> so that, it's been fun. It's been fun doing the, uh, the December workouts so far very confident that I'm gonna hit a pretty big PR at the end of this month. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be any issues. Shouldn't be any issues hitting that big PR. Oh man. All right, so got 10 seconds, gonna hit this last set. Then we, I might have to get going because it's a little bit late already this morning, at least for me, late for me. Everybody else is probably, it's pretty early. That's it. Oh man. That was all, all of it. Full workout. Ended on a high note. Whew. Yeah. That's it. Let's see what we got. We'll go raid somebody real quick. Why not? <laughs> Why not? We'll do it. Where's my phone? I had it over here set up to take a photo and never did. That's okay. That's all right. We'll hit up a little raid here. Be willing to bet Daryl's on. Fanatic's probably on by now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go raid Fanatic. All right. I'm gonna go say hi to him. Fanatic, that juicy raid. Uh, I think I spelled it wrong. Yeah, I did. Four T one C. Yeah, there we go. All right, yep, we're gonna go raid Fanatic. We're gonna go say hi to our homie Daryl. Wish him a good morning and a great workout. Let's go get it. Let's go say hello. Boom.
might be three swords. Fitness. Welcome Raiders. I hope your workout was awesome today. Come on in, the water's fine. Thank you for that shout out to my dude. How are you doing today? What are you up to? Is it 95 pounds on overhead press? Haven't touched a barbell for overhead press in a number of weeks. But it feels good. Using the rings today too. Rings are harder for me. The angle is the same, but for some reason I get more lat engagement. It is what it is. Deficit deadlifts this morning, dude. I'm a little depleted today. I ate my brains out over the weekend, which meant this: I had a, had to restrict my calories a little bit yesterday. Went from one.